my name is Brooke and I work at the Museum of Fine Arts Boston. Today is our first episode of MFA Playdates and we are going to be looking at flower gardens. Flowers and working in my garden is one of the, my favorite things to do. I love planting and digging in the dirt and watching things grow. Today I'm going to be reading you a short story and then we're going to be going to my friend Abby's house and she is going to look at a painting from the Museum of Fine Arts with you and help you create a flower crown with all materials that you can find in your house. So starting with our book, which is called Up in the Garden and Down in the Dirt. It's by author Kate Mesner with artwork made by Christopher Silas Neal. And we're reading it today with permission from Chronicle Books. You turn the first page, you get these wonderful illustrations of different things that you can find in your garden, like a cucumber or a potato or some carrots, all drawn by the artist. So up in the garden and down in the dirt by Kate Mesner with art by Christopher Silas Neal. Up in the garden, I stand and plan, my hands full of seeds and my heart full of dreams. Spring sun shines down to melt the sleepy snow. Wind whistles through last year's plants and mud sucks at my rain boots. It's not quite time, Nana says. Down in the dirt, things need to dry out and warm up. What's down there, I ask? Down in the dirt is a whole busy world of earthworms and insects, digging and building and stirring up soil. They're already working down in the dirt. This is one of my favorite pages. We have a snail over here and some ants down here and a millipede and a caterpillar. Up in the garden, we snap brittle stalks scoop rusty armfuls and wheel away weeds for the chickens. While they squabble and scratch, we spread compost over the soil. Down in the dirt, pill bugs chew through last year's leaves. I give a gentle poke. They roll up tight and hide in plate in suits of armors, roly poly round. Up in the garden, it's time to plant. I trail a furrow with my fingers and sprinkle seeds in a careful row. Give them a drink, Nana says. We pat them down to snuggle in the dark. Down in the dirt, a tomato hornworm rests, waiting for wings and the leaves where she'll lay her eggs. Up in the garden, carrot plants sprout, pea blossoms bloom, Wasps are on the prowl and honeybees visit, legs loaded with pollen. I weed and I wilt in the sun so strong, even Nana looks for shade. Down in the dirt, earthworms tunnel deep. I'm jealous of their cool, damp dark. Up in the garden, rain shower. Nana turns the hose on me, eee! I hide behind the cucumber vines, but their leaves can't save me. I shiver and laugh, drenched in Nana's rain. Down in the dirt, water soaks deep. Roots drink it in, and long-legged spider still walks over the streams. Up in the garden, there's so much to eat. Ladybugs feast on aphids. Nana crunches green beans. I bite a ripe tomato. Warm from the sun, juice dribbles down my chin. Down in the dirt, a robin's beak finds a cricket, a beetle, a grub. Slugs are scrumptious too. Up in the garden, 
We pick cukes and zucchini, harvesting into the dark. Bats swoop through the sunflowers, and I pluck June bugs from the basil until it's time for bed. Down in the dark, skunks work the night shift. They snuffle and dig and gobble cutworms while I sleep. Up in the garden, a praying mantis wakes to hunt mosquitoes. Nana sprays away the aphids, and I'm after grasshoppers, ready to swoosh, but... Snap! Someone else is faster. Down in the dirt, and a smooth, shining garter snake crunches on supper. Up in the garden, the wind grows cool. Pumpkins blush orange and sunflowers bow to September. Nana ties them together to build a house for reading. Down in the dirt, an orb spider spins her web. Strand by silken strand, she'll munch on some moths tonight. Up in the garden, colored leaves litter the squash vines, and we know the cold is coming. Hurry, hurry and harvest. There's enough for the neighbors too. Down in the dirt, frantic ants gather what we leave behind. They're storing food for cooler days ahead. Up in the garden, frost draws leaves, draws lace on leftover leaves where secret egg sacs hang, waiting for the warm to return. We say goodbye and spread the winter blankets. Down in the dirt, beetles burrow, ants scurry home, earthworms curl tight in the dark. When grandpa calls us in for soup, an autumn moon is rising. Up in the garden, dry corn stalks tremble and the wind smells like winter. But the long, ripe days of summer still rest in the garden beds. The ladybugs and bumblebees, earthworms and ants are hunkered down, hiding, biding their time. Dreaming of sunshine and blossoms and sprouts, under the bare arms of trees and the blanketing snow, a whole new garden sleeps down in the dirt. At the end of the book, if you have a chance to check it out from your library or buy it, there's a whole bunch of great information about all the animals and the insects that were part of the book. So now we are going to head over to my friend Abby's house and she's going to show you a beautiful painting from the Museum of Fine Arts and also help you make a new flower crown from materials in your house. Have fun! Hi everyone, my name is Miss Abby, and today I want to talk to you about a painting we have at the Museum of Fine Arts Boston. It's by an artist named Jacob Van Walsgebel, and it's over 200 years old. Here it is. Look at all the flowers in this painting. Do you see all the different colors as well? Do you recognize any of these flowers? I see tulips and roses. And if you look really closely, you can see some bugs in the painting. I also see something to eat. Now I want to show you how to make a flower crown with materials that most likely you'll have in your home. Let me show you the materials you need. You'll also need a grown-up's help for this. A paper bag from the grocery store. Some crayons. 
or markers or even colored pencils would work well. A scissors. I'm going to use watercolor paints that I have, but if you don't have watercolor paint, you can use food coloring. And if you don't have food coloring, you can also use markers. I'm going to use a paintbrush. You can use coffee filters to make the flowers, or if you don't have coffee filters, tissues work really well. Let's go through the steps to make our flower crown. You'll need a grown-up's help for this. You want to take your paper bag and cut off the handles. Just like that. Next, you want to take the bag and face it towards you like this so that the handles are away from you. And you can have your grown-up put their hand down and then you take a dark colored crayon or marker. I might actually use a marker. And you draw a straight line on this, each side of your hand all the way down the bag. Just like that. Then you're gonna cut down each line. And it can be a little bit tricky. So this is where having some grown-up help can be good. paper bag, which you're going to use for your crown. You can cut a little bit off right now, trim it a little bit. And then you can color your crown, any color you want, rainbows, anything. I think I'm going to color mine green to think about it as grass in a green field. And then once you're finished coloring your crown, you can have your grown-up help you measure it on your head, like this. They'll put a mark, and I have one all done here. And then they'll tape it along the edge. I recommend using tape. I think that will work better than glue. So that you know your crown will fit you so it's not too big and fall down or too small. The next step is to make some fringe. So you can take a piece of scrap bag that you have and you can color it green like grass. And then you wanna Cut a small piece of it and then you can cut into it and make it grass, just like that. Then you're going to take your grass and you can bend some pieces forward and back. And you can tape it on the inside of your crown. So it looks like your crown has some grass growing in it. Once you've taped on your fringe on your crown, now it's time to make your flowers. Here's where you can use a coffee filter or I'm going to use some tissues. I'm just going to cut the tissue in half. And then you can bunch it together to make a flower shape. You can use your tape to tape the stem like 
that. And then either with a marker or with your food coloring or with paint, you can color your flower. I'm going to use some paint. Take a lot of water and just dab the paint onto the flower. And you can add as many colors as you want and you can make as many flowers as you want. Once you're done with that, you just tape the flowers on wherever you like to decorate your flower crown. Here's one I have. Then you can wear your fabulous flower crown. And if you'd like to see more floral artwork at the Museum of Fine Arts Boston, go to collections.mfa.org and search flower.